As of now, we covered definitions, objectives, and bases of test level. Now, in this lecture, we will address test level objects. Test object means work product under test. In simple terms, all the items which we can test under the test level is referred to as test object for that test level. And at the end of this lecture, you shall be in a position to differentiate which test object belongs to which test level. Now let's start with the component testing level and see what are the test objects for this level. First test objects are component, unit, module, or code. During definition, we saw this small piece of code, and we derived different components out of it. Each of this is referred as component unit or module. And to find out these components, we need code. And these units act as a test object for the component level. Now let's move to the second requirement, data structure. A data structure is a particular way of organizing data in a computer so that it can be used effectively. For example, we can store a list of items having the same data type using the array data structure. If we have this information, we can manipulate the data and check how component behaves. Third test object is classes. A class in C++ is the building block that leads to object-oriented programming. It is a user-defined data type which holds its own data members and member functions which can be assessed and used by creating an instance of that class. And this is the example of class which has keyword, user-defined name and a body. Body consists of data member and member function. In component testing, we can test these data members by changing their values and each of the member function. And the last object is database module. When we work with SQL Server, we work on database modules. One such example is shown here. Like Open Connection is one such database module which establish a connection to a database. So during component testing, we can test this module. So these were the test objects of component testing. Component, unit, modules, code, data structure, classes, and database modules. Now, let's move to integration testing. So these are the six test objects under integration testing. Let's start with the first one, subsystem. During objective of testing, we saw this example, and we know that if these three components are part of software, then for integration testing, we need minimum two components to perform integration testing. That is why subsystem is the test object of integration testing. Next test object is database. What is database? Database is a systematic collection of data. Databases support storage and manipulation of data. Database make data management easy. Since data is used to communicate between two components, database is one of the test objects for integration testing. Next is infrastructure. Before going to this, you must know here integration testing refers to component testing and system integration. For system integration testing, the minimum requirement is two subsystems and a communication protocol between them. Therefore, infrastructure and interface are test objects of integration testing. Next is APIs. API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. That means API is nothing but an interface and interfaces are test objects of the interface testing. Last one is microservices. Let's understand this object. Microservice is software architecture design pattern in which complex applications are composed of small independent process communicating with each other using language agnostic APIs. These services are small, highly decoupled and focus on doing a small task. So microservices provide interface, and interfaces are test object of integration testing. These were the test objects of integration testing. Subsystems, databases, infrastructure, APIs, and microservices. Now let's move to the test object of system level. First test object is applications. An application can be hardware or software systems. 
We saw this picture while defining test levels. During system testing, we get the complete application. Next test object is operating system. To run any software application, we need operating system, which acts as a base. So operating system is test object for system testing. Next one is system under test. It is very obvious that the system we want to test is a test object. Last one is system configuration and configuration data. Configurations in software are used to enable different features for different variant. That means to test different variant of the software, these configuration data are required. That is why system configuration and configuration data are test objects of system testing. So these were the test objects of system testing. Applications, hardware or software system, operating system, system under test, system configuration and configuration data. Now let's see the test objects of acceptance testing. Most of the terms are already explained, so here I will quickly go through them and you need to remember these points. Test objects are system under test, system configuration and configuration data. Next is business processes for a fully integrated system. Business process is a collection of linked tasks which find their end in the delivery of a service or product to a client. A business process has also been defined as a set of activities and tasks that once completed will accomplish an organizational goal. That is why business process is test object of acceptance testing. Next is recovery system and hot sites. They are used for business continuity and disaster recovery testing. As the name says, this document specifies how systems shall recover during software crash or disaster and hot sites specify how the new updates will be installed. That is why recovery system and hot sites are test objects of acceptance testing. Next is operational and maintenance process. This helps to know how the software shall be used or maintained. Next is forms and reports of testing. And last one is existing and converted production data. All the data collected during production are used as a test object for acceptance testing. So these were the test objectives of acceptance testing. System under test, system configuration and configuration data, business processes for a fully integrated system, recovery systems and hot sites for business continuity and disaster recovery testing, operational and maintenance processes, forms, reports, existing and converted production data. Thank you.